What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with Freelander and of course it's been a while without Freelander on the channel. I've been pretty busy with the YouTube Pro Cycling series and the Tour de France there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one but we are now back with Freelander and I'm hoping we can finish season three ahead of PCM 20. And so Mikhail Lander heading into 2022 is of course now a two-time Grand Tour winner. We won both the Giro and the Vuelta last season in pretty spectacular fashion. What a season that was for Landa. And to me, that means we can only really have one objective going into this final season of the series. We tried it in the first season and we only came seventh at the Tour de France. But yes, we're going back to the Tour de France this season to try and complete the Triple Crown. And so you can see I have laid out the calendar for the season. We're already in February. We've uh, skipped those Australian races. This is the calendar I have laid out. We're going to go to Spain for Valenciana. Then we have Paris Nice after Strada Bianca. We're going to go to Milan San Remo because that is the other kind of big objective for the season. I want to try and win a monument. We've got Milan San Remo, Liège and Il Lombardia. And if we can't win the tour, I think a monument will certainly make up for that in the final season. Anyhow, we then have Catalonia after that. After Catalonia, a few weeks off ahead of, of course, the Ardennes Classics. A few weeks off again, and then we're really in the build up to the Tour de France. We've got the Dauphiné first, National Champs, and then it's the Tour de France. So before properly getting into this season, you can see the team now at Bahrain McLaren. We did lose a couple of good riders, the likes of Bilbao. I think betrago has gone. Here's the current squads. We now have brought in Jonas Vingegaard, who's probably our best signing. Uh, but here is the full squad for the upcoming season. Also worth noting that if we take a look at the World Tour, Bora Hansgrohe have become T-Mobile. And that jersey is so, so nice. I really, really like that jersey. So this is the race coming up today. We do start with a pretty long TT. Not really the way Lanza would probably choose to uh, kick his season off. Anyhow, this is a fun race, I think. I really do enjoy doing this race. We then have a hilly one on stage two, flatter one on stage three. Then Lander should come alive on stage four. Plenty of climbing right there, over 4,000 meters. And then a flat one in Valencia to finish. And so taking a look at our squads that we will kick off the season with in Valencia. Lander leads the team alongside Caruso. We've got Kwiatkowski, Dylan Toons is here. Uh, making his debut for the team is Jonas Vingegaard. We also have Scott Davis and Fred Wright. And so as I alluded to, we do have this time trial first and it's actually a team time trial, which definitely suits Lander a lot more. T-Mobile are the favorites and we are the second favorites. You love to see that. Hopefully we can really reduce our time loss today. So we get the TT underway and you can see Toons here, of course, Kwiatkowski, as well as Damiano Caruso. We do have a pretty good TT squad here. So then we're just coming up to the first time check and we've actually just about caught the team ahead of us. I think they're only a local team, so not really much of an achievement, but you can see already two and a half minutes up on that team. So then the team come into the final kilometer of the stage and we are going to be the first team across the line. And if you look at the first time check, we are well up on everyone so far, apart from Jumbo Visma, perfectly timed right there. But let's see where we are compared to everyone else. So you can see T-Mobile take the opening TC and look at that jersey. That is so, so nice in my opinion. Uh, we're down in sixth place in the end, over a minute down actually. And so T-Mobile of course take the opening TT with Micah, Shackman, Emmanuel Bookman in their ranks. What a squad they have at this race. Uh, we've lost over a minute already so going to be difficult in the GC at this point. And so stage two of the race is a punchy stage. Quite a few kind of hills at the beginning and then two hills at the end. Shackman is the favourite. We'll see what we can do though. So I do realise I didn't look at the start list. So let's do that very, very quickly right now. We do have Bernal and Froome at this race, along with Steven Kreuzvik, the new Ineos signing. Also Bookman, as I've already mentioned, Dumoulin is here. We have Caleb Ewan, Durvan, Pino, another GC leader with David Godu, um, who's developing pretty well. You can also see the rest of the teams at this race. 
So 70k still to go, but it's been a super fast day so far and already quite a few guys out the back. You can see the break right here with pretty dangerous uh, group up the roads. Galapan, Feline, Neolance as well. Pretty dangerous group, I would say. Anyhow, they just have one and a half minutes. So we are just coming in to the first climb of the day. Um, I think on this first one, I'm just going to make sure I stay to the front of this group. Probably won't try any attacks at this stage. I think it's too far to go in the, in the stage. As it, there is a fool right ahead of us. Maybe that could change things as it's Fabio Feline who does go down. Uh, but anyhow, let's just try and stay in this peloton, I think. So the pace has been super hard in the peloton um, as we have been approaching this group ahead. And just 66 riders now at the front. Quieto is actually going to come to the front and do some work. Um, and I think we can potentially try and attack on that final climb. Okay then, just 11 k to go in the stage. Here we come into that final climb right now. Just 61 riders coming in together. Let's go up to 85 to start. And we do have attacks already, do we? No, they're just pacing on the front. Uh, you can see a very hard pace set by Quirso and Freyle. Caleb Ewan is actually attacking off the front. Um, and Freyle is gone as well. Okay, we're going to have to pace this in ourselves. I'm going to try a little attack. Try and join Omar Freyle up the road. We don't really want Caleb Ewan in our wheel to the line. That is for sure. Let's continue this attack over the top. Ewan has been dropped right now. Right, now maybe we can relay with uh, this group of just three riders at the front of the race. Pino trying to join us as well and just 11 in that group behind him. So 5k to go in this stage and 15 riders now at the front of the race. I might actually try and lead out Dylan Toons here. He's definitely the better sprinter and you can see uh, the yellow jersey is in that group behind. Let's continue pacing through these barriers into the final 3k and maybe Toons can take this in a sprint. There is a short hill to the line. We can now go 99 with Mikhail. Lots of walls, lots of corners into the finish. We're going to open up the sprint. Dylan Toons can go now as well. Can at least one of us take this stage victory? Looking very, very good. Dylan Toons takes it with ease. We will settle for a place in this elite group at the front of the race. And so is this gap going to count? Back to Shackman, Afini, Caruso in this group. There's Kreuzvik, Bookman all behind. Hopefully this time gap counts. So a very nice victory for the team today. Very satisfying, I think, in pro cyclists. He sometimes work for the team and Dylan Toons delivers in the end. No time gap, sadly, back to that uh, Shackman group behind. However, just 28 classed in the front group. So we do move up to 17th now in the GC. OK, then stage three of the race, definitely one for the sprinters. We'll see what we can do today, but not expecting anything. Caleb Ewan, definitely the big favourite. So Dylan Toons actually gets himself in that orange points jersey. Very nice to see after working for him in that previous stage. We're just going to sit in this group today. So then 9.5k to go in this stage and the breakaway not quite bought in, uh, but they're about to be as you can see. I'll try and move up a little bit with Landa and I think I'm just going to try and take one of the sprinter's wheels. Uh, not really sure if we can really try anything in this terrain today. And so 6k to go right now. It's Tom Dumlan on the front for Jumbo Visma. Not sure who he's working for today. Uh, maybe Janssen is their sprinter at this race. Anyhow, 5k to go right now. We can maybe take Egan Bernal's wheel. We'll make sure we stay with the Colombian into the final 4k. We're in the first four or five riders in the peloton. Uh, maybe we can try something. Not really sure. Here come the sprinters though. And Caleb Ewan, who of course is the big favourite today. Can I take his wheel? I'm going to take Caleb Ewan's wheel. But it is the train of Jumbo Visma shooting off the front right now. We're just sprints with Lander and see where we end up. Janssen with a beautiful lead out. And I think he can take it. Maybe not. I think Hal Vorsen just takes it ahead of his compatriot. And we finish in ninth place with Lanza, a decent little sprint. So then we move on to probably the queen stage of this race. Hopefully we can at least get a stage win. I think that has to be the aim because I think the GC is just too far out of reach being over a minute down still. Bookman is the favorite, but Lanza, Bernal, De Moulin, Pino at this race, the list goes on a very strong start list. Going to be very difficult, of course. So we're one climb into the stage already. You can see it is still Shackman in yellow. 
for T-Mobile. We already have riders going out the back. That's how quick the pace has been um, as plenty of guys trying to get in today's breakaway. So you can probably see we're on this second climb of the day. I'm going to pace pretty hard right now with Vingegaard and Fred Wright. Try and really whittle down this peloton um, over the top of this climb. I'm hoping not too many riders will be left in this group. So Vingegaard has done a fantastic job right there and down to 77 riders already. Uh, I'm going to set a very hard pace again on this big first cat climb coming up. Oh my, I was just about to say we did another brilliant climb right there and we have fallen alongside Dan Martin, Froome, Pino, Vingegaard is down as well. Oh my, that is a big moment and luckily we do get back on our bike. That is a bit of a relief right there. But plenty of guys have gone down right here. We've got Quieto and Caruso up the road. So I think I'll just stay sat in and we'll see how the other leaders react to this. So I think Dylan Toons is actually going to have to withdraw from the race, sadly. Um, okay, we are now back in this group. I do want to set a tempo immediately if we can. Uh, but 65 riders now in this group. The stage was actually going perfectly for us until that moment. But Dylan Toons is a massive loss right here. Okay, so 5k to go in this climb. It's currently up to 12%. Caruso is on the front of this peloton. And if there's a chance to try and drop some of the other GT guys, this has to be a big opportunity. I know Quieto is up the road, but he has been dropped. So I don't think that's a massive deal. Let's see how many riders are left in this group at the top of this climb. So 2k to go on this climb and it's only Flores still up the roads. And down to 22 riders in this group. Caruso is done. I'm going to try a little attack with Lander. Why not? We have to try something on this queen stage of the race. Uh, let's pace 80, maybe 85 to the top. See who can stay with us over this climb. Currently, it's 20 riders, 11 riders now in this group as Godou is done. And you can see it's going to be 10 riders over the top in this group with us. And so I am hoping these guys are going to relay with me now. We have Micah, Pino, Kreuzvik, Bernal, the Mulan, Parapentra, uh, we have Bookman, Masnada, and then a group behind, you can see Caruso, Shackman, Froome, all out the back right now. This is perfect if these guys are willing to relay with me. Okay, so sadly that group did come back on, but still just 20 riders in this group. I think we have to relay pretty hard and make it difficult for these guys if we can right now. So 7k to go in this stage. We now come into the final climb. It's about six and a half kilometers and super, super steep. And so you can see, Quieto did just make it back in with a few other guys. Probably used that energy gel a bit early. Anyhow, let's see what happens on this climb. It's gonna be super, super difficult. And so we now do have attacks with 5k to go in the stage. I'm actually going to try and follow Thibaut Pino because I don't really trust Guero quite as much. And here we go, this group really being separated right now. Really seeing who is the strongest left in this peloton. And just three riders going off the front. We do have Parapentra, Pino and Lander. Let's continue on 84 right now. Nine guys just behind in this group. I think they're going to come back on. Um, and 84 to the line is actually going to be very, very difficult. 10 riders now in this group. These are the riders that are behind. Shackman in yellow is behind. The Mulan, Kreuzvik and Froome are struggling as well. But here comes Egan Bernal. Oh my word, look at our yellow. I didn't realise how little we have left. Let's go down to 75 into the final one and a half kilometres. Micah is done. Pino is done. Maybe I can follow Bookman, but I think we're going to get dropped in a moment as Egan Bernal powers on for the stage, uh, but Bookman trying to save his GC into the final meters of the race. We're fighting for a podium right here. We're sprint for the line. Bernal, I think we'll take the stage, but Bookman comes late and Emmanuel Bookman wins the stage. He will win the GC as well. Bernal second, we get third in a very, very selective final climb. Look at how many guys are struggling here. So sadly, we're not quite strong enough to take the stage right there. But now, and Bookman, I mean, look at these guys. They are so, so strong right now in this save. 17 seconds down, and that does mean we move up to fifth in the GC. And so we will round out the Volta Valenciana in Valencia itself. 120 kilometers and another one for the sprinters today. 
Let's see how this finishes. So six and a half K to go. I think I'm on Caleb Ewan's wheel. It was Janssen. I've moved to Caleb Ewan. I'm causing absolute havoc here amongst the best sprinters. They do not want Mikael Landa in this group. They do not want to be on my wheel. Anyhow, five K to go. I think we are on Caleb Ewan's wheel. Bit ridiculous, I know. Where is Hal Vorsen? Because I, I think he's the next best sprinter at this race. Anyhow, 3k to go. Jumbo Visma looking very good again, like they have the strongest sprint train at this race. 2.5k to go. We can, uh, uh, we can think about sprinting pretty shortly with Landa. Janssen looks very good again, though, into the final kilometer. We'll open it up. We're not going to be, uh, be able to challenge in this one, of course. Who will take it amongst the sprinters? And, of course, it will be Caleb Ewan, just about beating Hal Vorsen today. And we will finish again in the top 15. And so a little sprint stage to round out a pretty solid start to Mikhail Landa's season. Pretty unspectacular, but we still look like we are among the best climbers in the world. Bernal and Bookman, super, super strong though. Bookman getting a little payback for the world to last season. And so Toons is out with a broken collarbone. And I was actually thinking about having him kind of in my teammates for the Tour de France. So it looks like he will be back in time. Uh, hopefully that is the case. And so I do realise I haven't really shown you many of the squads or the transfers from this season. So let's take a very quick look right now. I'll just scroll through and you can pause it on any of the teams you wish to see. So you can see Van der Poel and Zacharin at Alpecin, Gaviria and Garrett Thomas now at Astana with Betrago as well. Of course, our former teammate. Another former teammate of ours, Bilbao, now at CCC. We have Kofidis with Muschetti and Michael Matthews. Quick step still with a very strong team, as you can see. Uh, EF, pretty similar team for them. They've got Tim DeClaire, of course, L Tractor on the front for them. FDJ now have added Bob Youngles. Um, if we go on Etihad, now with Ackerman and Mate Mohoric. Very strong team for them these days. Lotto Suzal with a pretty similar team, including world champion Phil Gilbert. Mitchelton Scott have added Zhao Almeida and James Whelan, two very good signings for them. Movistar with a similar squad to be fair, haven't really made any big signings to this point. NTT now with Christoph as well um, as Adam Yates, who was already there from last season. T-Mobile with a super strong team, as you can see. Barre McLaren, we know what our team looks like. Ineos with a super strong team. We know they signed Stephen Kreuzvik. Dagen Kolb has gone there as well. Super, super strong, of course. Same goes for Jumbo Visma, a pretty similar team for them. If we go on somewhere still with Benutz, Rui Costa perhaps their biggest signing. Uh, towards the end now, Trek Sigafredo, a super strong team because they have signed Jakob Fuglsang, the man who almost won La Vuelta, of course. Last season, they've also signed Ivan Garcia Cortina, who is so, so strong in this save. The likes of Hershey, Kanga, Kelderman, Sepkus as well. What a nice team for Trek. Um, and that rounds out all of the World Tour squads. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Season 3 of Freelander. Next time, we will do Strada Bianca and Paris Nice. Should be a much longer episode next time. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Drop a like on the video if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And let me know what you thought in the comments below. I will catch you guys in the next one.